Today, I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is to turn this four-wheel drive 4L6D into a two-wheel drive. Stick around. So let's dive right into our no BS style. The only thing I've done here is knock the transfer case and the extension housing off, six bolts here. The first thing we need to do is get the bell off. So in order to do that, these bolts are on the perimeter here. That is a Torx Plus bit. So the difference here. This is a Torx Plus, and this is a standard Torx bit. If you try to use this, it's just going to strip all them bolts out, and then you'll be welding nuts on there to try to extract them. No fun. Don't do it. Uh, also, with this Torx Plus bit, this is a snap-on. It's been warranted many times. But if you just put this on there and hit it with the impact, it won't strip the bolt out, but it'll snap this if you've got a big impact on there. So in order to get them off, we do is put a two foot breaker bar on there and just put steady pressure on it and heat them bosses up where them bolts go through. That aluminum will expand a little bit and all of a sudden, whoop, she'll come loose for you. So I've already done that. I've broken them all loose with a breaker bar. It did take heat to do it. So I'll get them zipped out of there. Probably wondering what this this and these are uh, this is a wash plug kit that I make and sell super handy uh, rule of thumb is if it's dirty on the outside and you take it apart well inevitably it's gonna end up on the inside so I always steam wash all my cases I highly suggest you go to the car wash before you do this get the thing clean because if it's dirty on the outside at all it's gonna end up in the pan in the barrel just uh, not good practice so get the thing clean first these are available on my website for almost all GM transmissions. Power Glide 350, 400, 460, 480E. So go grab some if you need them. So I got you dropped way down low so you can see my catch bucket underneath here. Uh, my healing bench here just has a three inch hole in the center of it. So I can ram the shaft through. And the mess ends up in the bucket, not all over my floor. Um, you guys doing this at home? You can use the milk crate. Uh, what really works good is just a five gallon pail. If you can see that five gallon pail with a flex plate on top, but the back of the whole stay and clean thing. When I pressure wash this, I couldn't get underneath very good. So we'll take a little wire brush action and clean this off around the pan bolts around the edge here. Just get all this really super clean. And now we're ready to take the pan off. Scope of this video, we're just going to show you the output shaft. I will have to go through this thing, obviously. She's, uh, she's a little ugly. The first thing, pull the filter out. Got you pulled in extra close here so you can see what the frig is going on. First thing we need to do is pop this clip off. And the reason we need to pull this solenoid to get the torque converter clutch solenoid out of there because that also goes into the pump. So get us a little prick tool here. Find the end of the clip. There we go. There you have it. There's the top secret clip. We're going to pull that solenoid out of there and snap this clip back on there so we don't lose it. And then I'm just going to clip that on there for safekeeping. Now we can go ahead and pull or torque converter clutch solenoid. A little wiggle and pull and that baby's out of there. I like to shove these bolts back in there too so I don't misplace them. If your transmission's a late 05 and up model year, it'll have the addition of this plug right here you need to unhook. Let's get that pump out of there. Now we got to make sure we take off our lockup o-ring because the pump will not slide past that. And now we'll get out the old, oh yeah, there it is, the old two-fister. Got to love them old garage sale scores. What we want to do is get up underneath the pump here. There's a flat 
right underneath where that solenoid went in there. Just gently pry up on it. You see that come up a little bit here. And you take your old rubber bonker. That's a technical term for it. Just put a little bit of pressure on your pry bar, screwdriver, whatever you got in there. And hit the opposite direction. There we go. There's a pump. Get our washer out of there right away. And set this off to the side. So our main focus right now is to get this band released. All we gotta do is get a little screwdriver in there. We'll push back on the input drum assembly. And you should be able to see on this camera here, there's a little peg that the band sits on. And all you got to do is pry that out, and there you have it. Band is released. Hopefully I can get this input drum up out of here without running into this camera. Little shake and tumble. Now we can pull our band out. All right, I got you pulled way out so you can see where we're at here in the case. What we're after is this uh, snap ring way down in here. It's yellow in color. We'll zoom in so you can see what's going on. So that is the final link holding the output shaft in is that yellow snap ring. I do have the proper pliers for this. That's what it looks like. It didn't look like that when I got it, but that's what you need to get that out of there. Uh, 460, 700, and Turbo 350. I'll have a similar clip like that. But for you home gamers out there, I'm going to do her the old-fashioned way with a set of uh, shitty Harbor Freight picks. And be careful up here in the case. This whole edge around here is razor sharp. I've gotten many a nasty cuts from inside a transmission. So we'll get this clip spun around so maybe you can see what's going on. The opening in the clip is right here where the end of my pick is. Uh, we're going to try these two to start. So I'm going to hold one side of the clip and try to get underneath the other side. There we go. All right, time to pump the brakes. A couple other videos I've seen on this topic, they take the rest of the crap out of here. There's no need for that. This is the end of the line. We're done taking shit apart if all you're after is the output shaft. Rubber bonker again. See you later. And there's our 4x4 output shaft. I apologize for that absolutely terrible audio in the first half of this video. So I had to completely go through this thing, and we've got her built back up basically to where we left off, minus the valve body. But that's not going to matter for what we're doing here with the output shaft. As you can see, she looks a little different than she did before. So we've got this output shaft propped up here on my drain bucket, and i got a little piece of wood there to shimmer up. And the objective here is to be protruding above our work surface there about 9 inches or somewhere there about. So all we're going to do here is pick this tranny up and set it on the output shaft. If the uh, front planet here raises up a little bit, it's nothing to worry about. I'm going to put this thing in park right away. If it won't drop into park. Just rotate the internals, it'll go in. And don't be alarmed if you hear that screeching, that's the low roller, it's supposed to make that noise. So now I'm just gonna reach underneath. We're sitting up on the splines yet. Just gonna hold the shaft and rotate the housing a little bit. And she's in. And back on with our clip. I'm going to use a proper tool here instead of a pick. 
but you can use two straight picks, one on each side, to just get up underneath there and kind of funnel it onto the splines. For the sake of showing you how to do this with the valve body on, I'm going to temporarily assemble this band anchor in here and we'll get the input drum set back in. We still got her in park and I've got a vice grip on the input shaft here. Not too tight, just locked into the splines there so I got a little handle here. And we just shake her in. There, I think I just heard her hit the bottom. Make sure. Hear that good solid plunk? You know you made her down all the way. go I got one end in oh almost got to rotate the band this way here I'm kind of right on top of the pin there there we go that's where we want to be Pulling the in, input drum towards the top of the case, 12 o'clock position. So close. There we go. Band is installed. Got the bell of the case greased up here. We're getting ready to stick the pump in. We got a new gasket. And I like to use a alignment pin for the pump here. This is a 5 16 bolt. It's not the right thread, but it will start in there just a tiny bit. It's kind of loose in there. We're just using it for alignment purposes, anyways. So, pull our ring sizers off that have been on there for quite some time. And I've got this washer here on the pump just stuck down with some assembly grease. Give the bushing surface a little bit there. Start all the bolts in here. Give her a little tap, tap, tap a roof. There where she goes. And I'll just snug them up here. Torque this up, 18 foot pounds. Always make sure the input still turns. Probably do that before you start tightening. <laughs> if the input shaft won't turn, you're not all the way down with your input drum when we shook that in with the vice grip. I didn't film installing the two solenoids back in or slamming this new filter in there. Uh, it's all pretty self-explanatory. This 
being rebuilt went together a little bit different than you're going to be doing. So just watch the front of the video backwards for that. <laughs> Be sure not to forget your lockup o-ring here and put a little lube on her. And we're ready to put the bell back on. Torque spec is 52 foot pounds on them, if you care. Some of these output shafts come with a sleeve with a o-ring in it there. And this shaft didn't come with one. But if you need this or not, depends on if your yoke is vented here in the back. I don't know what yoke I'm going to be putting on this thing, so I'm going to put this on there. It's better to have it and not need it. You know what I mean. So even if you've got a non-vented yoke like this one that's got a dummy or a dead spline in it. It's not going to hurt anything being in there. We're ready for a tail. Now yours is probably all oily in here, but this is fresh, dry, and clean, so I'm going to have to lube up this lead in for the o ring that sits back here. And of course, make sure your seal's on there. And a cherry on top. Our output speed sensor. And just to kind of show you what that does with a non-vented yoke with that tube in there and that seal. The air is trapped inside the yoke. could drill a tiny hole in here. It would fix it. Or rip that o-ring out of there. You don't have to pull that sleeve off. That way you can go back if you want. I mean, look at that. I degreased for you guys. <laughs> That's going to be all she wrote on the old 6D tail shaft swap situation. I keep her sealed up till we're ready for it on that 50 Chevy build back there. Uh, subscribe to watch that thing. That's going to be a pretty cool project. Also, we're going to take a super deep dive on the modifications we did inside this thing to make it live behind a Cam Dell S motor. Unfortunately, you guys are going to have to wait till we got that project done because I want to give you guys a real world from the driver's seat perspective of what these modifications do and maybe go over some of the tuning aspects as well. Uh, as far as these plugs and stuff, I make a bunch of other cool little tools to help you rebuild one of these, along with some other items you might be interested in. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the 50 Chevy build.